All right. Getting in here. I want to start uh, maybe giving you guys an insight to blending blending ideas together. And, and yeah, I got a haircut. A bunch of them cut, actually. Look at all those. Look at all those hairs that's been cut. Most people are like, dude, you don't have a top of a head. But I do. It's right there. Right? So I got the haircut. Got a little hat hair. But uh, I thought I'd get in here and do some... Uh, <laughs> Do some do some fusiony kind of things. Show you how you can incorporate fusion ideas with stuff you already know, right? So that's a big one. It's like using the things that you already know. If you know where your minor pentatonic box is, right? Like that, anytime you start stacking these fourths, these kind of sounds, you get, get some really cool fusion-y kind of ideas, right? So let's just take minor, let's take the G major scale. That's also the E natural minor scale. But I'm playing all of this, I'm just kind of implying a four. Playing all of it over a C chord. Okay, so step one, G major scale, right? Uh, knowing that G is G major is also your E minor. And then realizing we're gonna play that over a C. That's just G over C. And it's already starting to sound fusion-y. I've not played anything outside yet, right? This is really important, the fusion aspect. When you're playing over complicated changes, maybe not even super complicated. Let's, let's say you're playing something and then you move it a minor third. That's already kind of a fusion-y kind of sound. But what's important is being able to have that kind of fusion aspect if you just have a one chord vamp, right? Right? All of that is still inside G major skill. that sounds really kind of hip but it's still just g major right it's still e minor right we're just playing it over a different root but here's where the trick comes in and this is like any genre it's phrasing right if i want like a delta sound and i use the same tone Uh, one more time. That's all that kind of delta thing. If I want a Van Halen-y sound, right? Uh, it's all in the phrasing. You know, uh, not changing any tones. That's the point. Not changing any tones. Just changing the phrasing. With fusion, I think of a lot of sequences. That's really the thing. Uh, one more time. still just G major, right? That's still Blackberry Blossom. Uh. That's still bluegrass to me, right? To my redneck stupid face. 
But when you start sequencing it out is when you get it. Let's take that sequence. This is a very Tom Quell-ism. We're gonna play it in key of G. Here's the other thing, is don't just think about G being this bar chord thing that you always play through. Like that's the default uh, rock guy, G. Maybe this one. That's a little more country guy. That's a little bit more the country aspect of G. Rock G, you know, that kind of thing, okay? So let's take the G that maybe um, none of us really like to play through often, and it actually lays out nice for some fusionisms because you have one, three, and major seven right here under the fingers. I'm just going to lay the middle finger down on root. Look where that pinky is. Look at that, you got three and seven right there. That's like, you know, the quintessential jazzism or close to it. So let's take that sequence. This is one that I would consider fusion for beginners, right? Uh, sequencing for beginners might even be a better way to look at this, right? Uh, and, 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 and this is something you can apply to oh, so many styles of music. I use it all the time to give my fiddle tune, bluegrass playing, uh, a different sound. Um, and I use it, uh, gosh, if we're just shredding out on the end of life as a highway on tour, I use it over that, you know, it's like, this is some cool stuff that can kind of fit wherever you want it. I didn't really know what the, the right thing to call this hang today was, but I was just like, Hey, fusion for beginners. Right. So let's take, we're going to go three notes up. Sean Tubbs is in the house. I feel stupid teaching any of this stuff in front of Sean. Sean is my one of my favorite players, favorite modern players, favorite players. Period. Sean, I'm gonna I'm gonna bother you again for for more lessons. I, I got I, it's not really a lesson because he won't he won't let me take lessons from him. <laughs> but I, I I hound him every now and then, and he'll he'll bestow wisdom upon me. Right. So go check out his page. We're going to do this this little sequence. This is one that I ripped from Tom years ago, Tom Quell, when we were doing a clinic at RMA. And uh, he would do it kind of like this thing. Really legato. That, that, that kind of sound. You know, he would uh, really... Uh, I can't do it today. There you go. There it was. Um, so, like, my strength is a lot more my picking. So I'll take those same kind of ideas. Uh, maybe that's the idea. Now we're doing this. Uh, sorry, it's too many sequences all at once. There it is. As of one I ripped off earlier. Anyways, anyways, so so on and so forth. Let's take that sequence. We're gonna start on the six of G or the one of E minor. I'm just thinking through G. So, G major. So let's take six, seven, one, two. Now we're gonna frame a triad, which is the D triad. Now we're gonna drop that down and do the same sequence as string set down. There you go. Sorry, I'm sloppy today. Much better. 
Mm-hmm. It's kind of like I can't teach it. I can, pl- I can play it, but I can't teach it. I'm trying to work on that. Try to be a better teacher here. like us getting started here. this now can expand throughout the neck of the guitar and we can use these same sequences in other spots let's go up here I'm still hearing all of that kind of over a, 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 a C. Okay, so we're talking about sequencing. I'm seeing over here in the corner, I'm seeing Jim and Jay talk about the Andre Neary thing. Those kind of isms were. Uh, sorry, one more time. Let's talk about those. Let me try to play it. Um, one more time. These are a lot more complicated, and I had to mutate the right hand because Andre plays them like this. I can't do it like that, or I haven't spent enough time doing it like that. But I can do it like these. Let's just take one of these at a time. Let's take the first one, which is uh, minor seven. That's like an add nine, but I'm still thinking, look, G, still G major scale. Here we go. So I'm hammering on the first one. Middle, pick, middle. So this one's like three, five, seven, one, five. And then the last one is five, seven, one, three, seven. Uh, it's really difficult. Difficult for a flat pick thing, right?
So that defies our um that defies our beginner's thing. This is not that's a not a beginner sequence. That is not a beginner sequence. What is beginner about it though is the fact that you've got all G major scale implying a six chord. Or a four chord or a two minor. Let's take this little sequence um, that uh, I stole from Jack Gardner to a, really a Tom Quayle ism. Uh, I've heard Tom play it. I've heard Jack play it. All the legato Brett Garson like type guys they play it too. Um, so let's let's break this one down. This is a fun one. We're gonna play through the same scale, all G major. This is what makes it beginner to me. Is what makes it beginner is all G major. There's our first sequence, so it's what? What is that? Five, six, four, uh, uh, three, one. Keep it going. That kind of connects all of them. Maybe we blend them. Now we're going to outline a G with some of these fourths. Now we're going to jump down and play E and then G, A, uh, F sharp. There's the whole thing right there. We'll just use that small piece. See what you got in chat. Andy, greetings from Insomniaville, Western Australia. Cheers, Grant. Hope you're well. Having fun with this. Thomas saying, I noticed you're throwing some open strings in there. I'm really not. I'm really not. No open strings. They could be whatever you want, Daryl. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and a two and a. They could be whatever you need them to be. It's less of thinking of that. It's just groupings of five, right? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Four. That is your Eric Johnson isms. Ah. 
Yeah, they don't really need to be anything as far as like quintuplets or sextuplets or anything like that. It's just they can be 16s, they can be 8s, they can be 30 seconds, they can be quarters. I just want you to learn the, the, the road map. <laughs> Right, the other one was Sorry. That's what I was after. Area 859 is saying, Andy, where is your new silver telly? It's actually in a vault on uh, with the, the road gear for the tour. I'm using it as the main guitar for um, like our half step down stuff. My ear won't pop. I'm trying to get it to pop and I can't get it to pop. Ugh, drive me crazy. Um, I'm using it for the uh, half step down stuff on, on uh, the Gary Levox Rascal Flats tour. Uh, it's not really Rascal Flats, it's Gary's solo stuff, but we're doing a ton of Rascal Flats tunes. We're doing like all the um, quintessential and uh, doing that thing, doing, um, you know, what hurts the most, uh, all that stuff, all those tunes. So I need a lot of half step down. So I've got that and a half step down. I've got. Uh, four Andy Wood models out on the road with me. I got the red one for a single coil drop D half step down. I've got the brown single coil, which is standard. And then I've got the brown humbucker, which is standard. And then the silver, which I half step down. Uh, area 859 says, I'll be purchasing the silver or the whiskey. You made all the specs I want. Yeah, same specs as this one. Same spec, but just different color. <laughs> This is another great sequence that I like. Ah. I, I like to play the, the stack. So if you're wanting to add, uh, Jason's, I'm sorry, I interrupt myself. Jason's saying with hollow hybrid picking, how are you managing compression? It's really in the hand, right? I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. I don't know if that helps. 
Rondé is saying it sounds like one, two, one, two, three, four equals six as opposed to five. I may be miscounting. I mean, it could be in how I'm phrasing it. I'm kind of phrasing it different every time. One, two, three, four, five. Or, yeah, that's how I'm thinking of the first one. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five is the first one for sure. That's how I'm thinking of it. How is your delay set for? Uh, hey, CBIP, hope oh, you're doing good. I use the, uh, like a quarter note dotted eighth thing with a long feedback on both. And then uh, rolling off the top end to get, get them to warble a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of detune in there. So it's nice that uh, it doesn't like get in the way when you're playing fast. Ah. So it's nice. It sits in there. Um, Andy, this is from Stefano. Your new pickups, when will they be uh, available? Uh, what's the main difference? The pick These pickups are really warm sounding. Um, and they're a little fatter on single notes. They're really bubbly. I like them better than what I was using, which was the Thornbuckers. I mean, that's why we made the switch, right? You always use what you like. Thornbucker is a little more PAF sounding. Almost got that like fat single coil thing. This is a little more like this. I mean, it's an Alnico 2 magnet. So, you know, let me just give you your popular Alnico 2 pickups. It's like your Van Halen pickup, your um, uh, Pearly Gates ZZ Top kind of pickup. The Slash pickup is Alnico 2. So all that kind of thing is this pickup. It's it's nice, man. It's real crunchy and aggressive and and just sounds great. <laughs> Thank you. 
So they sound good with all kinds of different tones, right? Like they sound good with all kinds of different tones. Area 859 is is asking about the Woodshed Guitar Experience. Is it for pros or can noobs attend? Actually, most of our players are not pro players. Say 90% of our attendees are hobby level players, amateur players, and guys that like to play on the weekend. Um, Basically, it's less of a uh, get rich quick in your chops building kind of thing. And it's more of a chance for you to just spend time and hang out and learn from guys like Mark Letary and Eric Johnson and Greg Cock and Andy Timmons and Britt Mason and Seth Rosenblum and myself. It is very much a community-driven type of thing. We encourage everyone to uh, uh, reach out and take part in it. You know, we're running out of spots. We're running out of availabilities. Please reach out as soon as possible. It is um, woodshedguitarexperience.com. That's going to be August the 24th through the 27th this year and it's on a beautiful lakefront property that we own it's going to be uh uh you know all your your uh, food lodging alcoholic beverages those types of things are going to be there um i am at liberty to say that sir will be there this year prs will be there um celestian will be there we've got some special guests that i'm going to announce next week that'll be there um who else is going to be there? I just did the inventory this morning. I, I, I've i been going a mile a minute, guys. Forgive me if I'm a little absent-minded. I'm just coming off a tour. I'm going back in the studio tomorrow to work on my record, and I'm live streaming. I just don't stop. Can't can't stop, won't stop, you know? Um, but basically, with the camp, we want you to uh, reach out to Brady. We also have an installment plan. And that installment can be, uh, as long as you're paid in full two weeks before the event, you can pay in whatever installment you like. So uh, woodshedguitarexperience.com. Chuck has just put it down there. Cheers to our Woodshed member, Louie, for getting me this awesome hat. Um, I'm a big Chicago Bears fan. They just had the draft. And their first pick was Darnell Wright from the Vols. And I think it's awesome that I've got this orange and camo um chicago bears hat now to wear for football season i'm really excited about that cheers louis woodshed member louis uh cheers to all the woodshed members that have been catching us out on tour i've actually got to catch up here with chuck and update our online schedule on my website maybe we can do that this afternoon at some point uh, but cheers to everyone who's been coming out and catching the shows uh again area 859 859 man please Reach out to Brady at woodshedguitarexperience.com. A lot of our members here, I see Jim Lewis and Jay and some of these guys, they, they've they been to the event. Randy Heston's in the house. They've been to the event. They know what we're about. It's a really amazing, uh, amazing uh, event that anybody of any level is going to leave there with just fantastic memories. You're going to have better idea on chops. You're going to be a better guitar player. Hopefully you'll learn something about tone, leave there with better tone. Uh, better understanding of how we set up our, our rigs and things like that. But most importantly, you're going to leave there with some really awesome memories. It's just a really fantastic hang all four days. Uh, great playing, great picking. Uh, obviously, some of the greatest guitar players that are alive today. Like I said, freaking Eric Johnson. You know what I mean? It's like Andy Timmons, Brent Mason, Seth Rosenblum, Mark Letary, Greg Cog. Just some of the greatest, uh, seriously, in the world. So, yeah. Sorry for the spiel, but that's the truth. Tom is saying, can you grab a guitar with other humbuckers so we can hear the difference? I mean, I can. Yeah, this uh, this is a Sir Modern, which is the closest thing that I have. Now, this is tuned, this is tuned down a half step. This is tuned down a half step. <laughs> Let me play in the same key. I'll have to move everything up. I have said. He's having much more of a mid honk. And more ooh, right? Oh, I gotta get this switch fixed. Yeah. quite as uh, even across the spectrum. Now also, this guitar is Alder, 
and uh, maple with a rosewood fretboard, so the, the body woods aren't the same. It's just more, um, this is the Aldrich. It's just more of a rock, kind of higher compression. Uh, I don't know. It, it doesn't sound as rich as this combination, which is swamp ash and uh, maple. <laughs> little bit lower output too um, than the uh, Aldrich. Actually, it's a lot lower output than the Aldrich. No, the Aldrich is more, is way less. It's not a PAF. Aldrich is a flamethrower. It's just a lot of low mid and a lot of uh, grunt and a lot of like, uh, I don't know. I like to set my tone really dark. So I need to pick up and I like to hear nuance of the, the guitar, right? I want to hear every single note. Like that's beautiful to me. Yeah, it's just really, this is just a really rich sounding. Even across the spectrum, responds well to the volume knob. That's, that's that's my spiel i don't know uh he says great comparison here the difference yeah for sure um are the new pickups going to be uncovered as well yeah if you go to the uh sir website i think it's already kind of popping off i'm not sure if they've all made it up on there yet or not but i've been approving the uh the print and the assets so they should be going up any day now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. steve says i just got the woodshed compressor unreal how much it changes the overall tone. It's a big pedal and small package. Yeah, here is um, no compressor. And then with it. Right. with it 
-hmm. makes a great difference. I love it on um, medium gain tones. Here's without it. With it. is about the best about the best uh cheers area 59 appreciate you man uh alvaro mendez how you doing he says i see them on the site i just bought a set of the woodshed so i wouldn't mind adding woodbuckers to one of my ibanezes you'll you really like them i i really believe that everybody tries it out it's like a it's like a pickup that just kind of sounds good in every environment and one of you guys are being so kind about me, me being able to play a lot of different genres that's really a part of it is having a pickup that doesn't dictate or limit me when i go from genre to genre i want everything to sound good all the time <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i don't want to be like oh this is a rock guitar i have to get another guitar uh steve says you'll love the compressor yeah i think you will too yeah for sure um, also for you gearbox owners, I, I want to point out that I, I use the mids to control my top end. So I usually run the mids really low, like nine, nine o'clock. It doesn't, it's not like a mid thing like, like this. It's like a high, very specific kind of high frequency. Um, David Turner says, I'm going to go get me one of those compressors. Uh, the Porter cable <laughs> any good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Craftsman, get a craftsman. I want an inflatable air compressor. That's what I want. An inflatable one uh with that said yeah great little hang today um let's just review a couple of things here at the end uh when you're looking for that fusiony thing you don't have to play in all these crazy sounds you just take a chord like your four chord we're in the key of g g uh a b c c's four chord lose your g major scale and sequence things It was like in the Jack Gardner video. get stevie rave tones i think so let's try to get one really quick this
So it's not a strat, obviously, but it can do a little bit of that stratty thing, right? You know, that's, 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 it's gotta be said that nothing's gonna be a strat except a strat on the neck pickup, but it sounds close. Close enough to get you through, right? <laughs> uh, Tom says, I finally got my gearbox and I run it about the same way. Yeah, 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 for sure. Really didn't rock and say in this SRV tone. It's, it's not really, for a telly, it's close. You know what I mean? You can you can get it close enough. Album says you don't need to change a thing. You just play it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the goal is to not have to mess mess up what's going on too much. You know, kind of does the thing. You know, uh, maybe, uh, pretty good uh always you know mel bay means more than ebay kind of thing practices is what it takes more than anything else but yeah i'm really happy with the products we've put out they sound great and they can help me travel through some different genres pretty easily uh let's do a little housekeeping here before i sign off uh fangio says by sequencing what kind of sequences you would you recommend to start yeah Let's just do some basic ones to start. Where you're really framing triads. sequence beginner sequence right there there <coughs> excuse me uh with that said let's do a little housekeeping here um if you're interested in learning and really really making a learning experience out of it uh go to patreon.com i upload all the time just this week even being on tour i uploaded four or five times 
Uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of videos. I think like 600 videos on there. Uh, when you go over there, you can actually join the uh, combo amp tier. That's my middle of the road tier. And that gets you a weekly live masterclass, access to all the videos, transcriptions, tones, all that good stuff. And you can even book one-on-one -on -one lessons over there. So if you're interested in learning, uh, go to Patreon, patreon.com slash Andy Wood Music. Great community, great bunch of dudes, great bunch of guys over there. Um, if you're wanting to keep up with me, maybe come out and catch a show. Chuck and I need to update the calendar, but andywoodmusic.com will be uh, the place where you can find all videos and links to product and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you're interested in joining the Woodshed Guitar Experience, I urge you to sign up as fast as possible. We do not have, we are over halfway sold out, so we do not have a lot of slots left. Um, please. Um, I do not know that exact number, but if you're interested, please reach out to Brady. That's woodshedguitarexperience.com. Again, this year we have four days with Eric Johnson, Brent Mason, Andy Timmons, Mark Letary, Greg Cock, Seth Rosenblum, myself. PRS will be there. Sir will be there. Um, Celestian's going to be there. Uh, we got a great crew of folks, and hopefully there's going to be more companies that I can announce this week that are going to be there. So, with that said, I hope everyone has a great week. Take care of yourselves. Um, make sure to uh, pick up that guitar and not just go through habits. Pick up that guitar and maybe try to find something new, right? Try to find something that have fun with, you know, explore a little bit. I, tonight, am going to do something fun for myself. I'm going to go see Gary Clark Jr. He's playing at the Tennessee Theater tonight. So I'm going to go see Gary Clark Jr. Really looking forward to that, guys. And I hope you all have a fantastic week. Reach out. Uh, Chuck has put the links right over there. That's patreon.com slash Music. That also if you don't want to learn and you just like watching the YouTube and you like watching the Instagram, five bucks a month can help keep the channel rolling. Uh, so that's your, your, your Starbucks cup of coffee once a month. Uh, can help keep the channel rolling and help us keep the lights on and maybe buy a six-pack of beer every now and then. So uh, Bill Wilson in the house. K Sharp, we got to get John Cordy over here. Maybe in 2024 we can make it happen. Hope everyone has a fantastic week. And I will talk to you guys very, very soon.